Joseph, I want to quote you here. It's from your book. And, you know, we're heading, we're in late summer now, and we've been watching Jerusalem be in turmoil this summer, particularly the Temple Mount. And you write, you say, notice how Israel and Jerusalem centric the imagery is. Jesus doesn't come back to be president of the United States. He doesn't come back to be the Secretary General of the United Nations. He doesn't come to rule the European Union or sit in the Vatican. He comes to rule and reign in Jerusalem as the king of the Jews, but he will also rule over the entire world from there. Why is God so Israel-centric? You wrote that, Joseph. You answer that question. (laughs) Well, he tells us in his word that the Israeli people have a very special mission. They were chosen. We say they were chosen. What were they chosen to do? They were chosen to carry the scriptures to the whole world. That's their number one, and the knowledge of the the one, you know, true God of the universe. That was their mission. They, They were to be a light to the Gentiles, meaning all the other nations. The question is, have they succeeded? And, you know, they've had some shortcomings along the way, which has caused them to be judged at various times in their history by God. But you know what? There are people all over the world that because of that mission, now know who the true Messiah is, now know who the the God of the universe is. We owe that to God and to Israel, because to some extent or another, they carried out the mission. And so the neat thing is that when we study the scriptures and we look at this kingdom that we're talking about, is just what you you read there. We're headed into a very Israel-centric world. Absolutely. One of my concerns when I was writing this book was, wow, I don't think many Christians fully understand this. I don't think they're looking at those prophetic passages of what the kingdom is about and understanding it. Yet they're excited about what their destiny is, but they don't really fully understand it. And that reminded me of the first time that Yeshua Jesus came. (laughs) There were a lot of people in Israel who weren't expecting the Messiah to look like this, to act like this, to to be so meek. And they were more like expecting a conqueror who was going to free them from Rome. That's right. I think it's dangerous when we don't fully understand what's being revealed to us in Scripture very clearly, I think, about what the future is going to be like. Because people, they had the Scriptures back in Israel, yet they didn't recognize their Messiah. And I'm, it makes me think, well, wait a minute, there's so many Christians who don't understand what we're headed to in the next world. Aren't we, like, in the same boat as some of the, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees who really weren't anticipating an accurate picture of the Messiah. We think we know Jesus, but do we really know the Jesus of the Bible, or do we see him through this, you know, some kind of a caricature image that's been portrayed to us by our own traditions? Mm -hmm. That's one of the other things I try to tackle this book. You do. We could uh, be suggesting here that uh, the millennium and the last days is just all about the Jews, Not, not necessarily. I mean, the millennial temple, both Jews and Gentiles worshiping together in the Millennial Temple. Absolutely. And you know, there's so many blessings illuminated in the prophecies about other nations. Yes. I mean, one of the most beautiful passages in the whole Bible to me, especially as, you know, an Arab American, you know, (laughs) we get a bad rap sometimes and deserve it sometimes. (laughs) But, you know, I read Isaiah 19 and I see the blessing Mm -hmm. that is poured out on Egypt and Assyria. Equal blessings, by the way, Mm -hmm. with Israel. It's a beautiful passage. And, you know, these are things that the church doesn't understand. The church doesn't know. You know, the whole plan of God is laid out through these prophecies, and yet we're not paying that much attention to them no, for some exactly. Reason. And that's exactly. why I get excited about it. Yeah, and that, that passage, I believe, is a millennial reference where Egypt is honored. If we're going to ignore prophecy, we're certainly not going to dive into what we just talked about. I mean, and that's the problem is that, uh, you know, we teach a lot on particular things in the church. I'm talking good churches, too, but even the best churches out there very rarely go down the path we're talking about. And thus we have a kind of a almost a fantasy 
galaxy view of eternity and, uh, of course, a millennium leading up to eternity. Joseph, you state in, in your book, you state the kind of a dilemma here, and I share this dilemma with you, by the way, and that is how do we get younger people to be enthused about this kind of a topic? And you ask if we are really longing for this period, you reflect on the younger people and their perspective and explain, which is, I deal with this all the time. Their world is just beginning. They're planning right. for their future. They're not really wanting their future interrupted. They don't see the world in quite the sad state that the three of us do here. And they <laughs> kind of look at these topics <laughs> as robbing them of their future. And as a result, and Joseph, you travel to enough conferences where we talk about either end times or current events or both, you'll see the average age is probably about 60. And it's because of this thinking, and you, you outlined it here in your book very effectively. And yet I you you got a burden for these younger people. Yes, well, you know, I'm father of five, grandfather of four, and I remember when our kids were younger and we would get to, you know, challenging prophetic scriptures, and I would, you know, start to wax eloquently because this was a topic I really <laughs> yeah. knew inside and out, and I thought they'd be so excited by it. And I could see they weren't. And I started to probe beneath the surface to find out. And that's what it came down to. My life is just beginning and mm -hmm. and want to get married and have children and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, of course, you know, those are all wonderful things to want. And I said, well, honey, we don't know that this is going to happen tomorrow. We don't know that this is going to happen 20 years from now. And back then, you know, this was, this was in many cases, 20 years ago. And so they have seen those things come to reality for the most part with my, my family. You know, so prophecy can be scary sometimes, and that's also part of my concern. When we only look at this brief period of seven years and three and a half years of it is, you know, worse than the other mm -hmm. half, and, you know, that's not a very long period of time that the world goes through this tribulation. But we got a thousand years after that. That's right. Of glory and paradise and the Garden of Eden. Why don't we dwell on that? Because that's, yeah, that's something well, I think that young people will be happy about just as much as us old people. You know, Jan Joseph has taken part of a script from one of my messages, almost word for word. Mm -hmm. And I, I, <laughs> I tell young people, look, you, you may not want to hear any, any of this stuff I'm going to talk about when I talk about the coming of the Lord, about the rapture. But one second after the rapture, you won't care about any of the plans you had here on earth. Yeah, that's a good reminder. Yeah. It's all good news. Well, that's followed by the new heavens and the new earth. That's a whole other program. We can't go there. But there is good <laughs> news ahead folks and, and again right. we it's eternity yeah it's eternity right. we opened the program talking about how current news almost makes us physically ill to to really really examine what's going on in the world today it can be so troubling and that's why i wanted to end this hour as we focus on things of eternity, things of an eternal nature. You can learn more at WND.com. The restitution of all things Israel Christians and the end of the age 